Dear people of God, in this Christmas season, let it be our duty and delight to hear once more the message of the angels, to go to Bethlehem and see the Son of God lying in a manger. Let us hear and heed in Holy Scripture the story of God's loving purpose from the time of our rebellion against him until the glorious redemption brought to us by his holy child, Jesus. And let us make this place glad with our carols of praise. Pero en primer lugar, oremos por las necesidades de todo el mundo, por la paz y la justicia en la tierra, por la unidad y misión de la iglesia por, por la cual él murió, y especialmente por su iglesia en nuestro país y en esta ciudad. Y porque él particularmente les ama, Recordemos en su nombre lo, a los pobres y los desamparados, a los que tienen frío, a los abri, hambrientos y los oprimidos, a los enfermos y los afligidos, a los que están solos y a los ind, indeseados, a los ancianos y los niños, y a todos aquellos que no conocen ni aman al Señor Jesucristo. Finally, let us remember before God his pure and lowly mother, and that whole multitude which no one can number, whose hope was in the word made flesh, and with whom, in Jesus, we are one forevermore. And now, to gather up all these petitions, let us pray in the words which Christ himself has taught us, praying in the language of our hearts orando en el idioma de tu corazón. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Dios Todopoderoso nos bendiga con su gracia. Cristo nos dé los goces de la vida sempiterna, y el Rey de los Ángeles nos conduzca a todos a la comunión de los ciudadanos del cielo. Amen. The Almighty God bless us with his grace. Christ give us the joys of everlasting life and to the fellowship of the citizens above, may the King of Angels bring us all. Amen. Lectura del libro de Génesis. La serpiente era más estatua que todos los animales salvajes que Dios el Señor había creado, y le preguntó a la mujer. Así que Dios les ha dicho que no coman del fruto de ningún árbol del jardín, y la mujer le contestó. Podemos comer del fruto de cualquier árbol, menos del árbol que está en el medio del jardín. Dios nos ha dicho que no debemos comer ni tocar el fruto de ese árbol, porque si lo hacemos, moriremos. Pero la serpiente le dijo a la mujer, no es cierto, no morirán. Dios sabe muy bien que cuando ustedes coman del fruto de ese árbol, podrán saber lo que es bueno y lo que es malo y que entonces serán como Dios. La mujer vio que el fruto del árbol era hermoso y le dieron ganas de comerlo y de llegar a tener entendimiento. Así que cortó uno de los frutos y se lo comió. Luego le dio a su esposo y él también comió. En ese momento se les abrieron los ojos y los dos se dieron cuenta que estaban desnudos. Entonces cosieron hojas de higuera y se cubrieron con ellas. El hombre y su mujer y su mujer escucharon que Dios el Señor andaba por el jardín a la hora que, en que sopla el viento de la tarde y corrieron a esconderse de él entre los árboles del jardín. Pero Dios el Señor llamó al hombre y le preguntó, ¿Dónde estás? El hombre contestó, Escuché que andabas por el jardín y tuve miedo, porque estoy desnudo, por eso me escondí. Entonces 
Dios le preguntó, ¿Y quién te ha dicho que estás desnudo? ¿Acaso has comido del fruto del árbol del que te dije que no comieras? El hombre contestó, La mujer que me diste por compañera me dio de ese fruto y yo lo comí. Entonces Dios el Señor le preguntó a la mujer, ¿Por qué lo hiciste? Ella respondió, la serpiente me engañó y por eso comí del fruto. Entonces, Dios el Señor dijo a la serpiente, Por esto que tú que has hecho, maldita serás entre todas las demás animales. De hoy en adelante caminarás arrastrándote y, y comerás tierra. Haré que tú y la mujer sean enemigas. Lo mismo que tu descendencia y su descendencia. Su descendencia te aplastará la cabeza y tú le morderás el talón. La palabra del Señor, demos gracias a Dios. Please join in singing hymn number 112 in the bleak midwinter, verses 1, 2, and 4. Reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling. In the wilderness prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed, 
and all people will see it together. For the word of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out. And I said, What shall I cry out? All people are like grass, and their faithfulness is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass, the grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our Lord endures forever. You who bring good news to Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who bring good news to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift up, do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See, the sovereign Lord comes with power and he rules with a mighty arm. See, his reward is with him and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those who have young. The word of the Lord. Comfort, comfort now, my people, tell of peace, so says our God. Comfort those who sit in darkness, mourning under sorrow's low. To God's people now proclaim that God's pardon waits for them. Tell them that the war is over. القراءة اليوم من سفر الأشياء أصحى سبعة من عدد عشرة إلى خمسة عشر ثم عاد الرب فكلم أحار قائلا أطلب لنفسك آية من الرب إلهك أمق طلبك أو أرفعه إلى الفوق فقال أحاز لا أطلب ولا أجرب الرب فقال اسمعوا يا بيت الداود هل هو قليل عليكم أن تضجروا الناس حتى تضجروا إلهي أيضا ولكن يعطيكم السيد نفسه عاية آهي الأزراء تحبل وتلد ابن وتدعوه اسمه إيمانويل زبدا وأسلا يأكل متى أرف أن يرفض الشر ويختار الخير هذا كلام الرب Bye. 
the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who is said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what, what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord. And my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things. He has sent the rich in the way empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and then return to her home. Now the time came for Elizabeth to give birth, and she bore a son. Her neighbors and the relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. The word of the Lord.
This is the story of the birth of John the Baptist from the Gospel of Luke. Now the time came for Elizabeth to give birth, and she bore a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. On the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said, No, he is to be called John. They said to her, None of your relatives has this name. Then they began motioning to his father to find out what name he wanted to give him. He asked for a writing tablet and wrote, His name is John. And all of them were amazed. Immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue free, and he began to speak, praising God. Fear came over all their neighbors, and all these things were talked about throughout the entire hill country of Judea. All who heard them pondered them and said, What then will this child become? For indeed the hand of the Lord was with him. Then his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke this prophecy, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty Savior for us in the house of his servant David. And he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Thus he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and has remembered his holy covenant. The oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham to grant that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. The child grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the wilderness until the day he appeared publicly to Israel. The Word of the Lord. He 
shall speak peace, peace, he shall speak peace unto the heathen. He's the righteous Savior, and he shall speak, he shall speak reading from the book of Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. 
the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Ding dong, merrily high, heaven the bells are ringing. Ding dong, merrily the sky. Lucas capítulo 2 versículo del 21 al 36 El niño Jesús es presentado en el templo A los ocho días circuncisaron al niño y, lo, y le pusieron por nombre Jesús El mismo nombre que el ángel le había dicho a María antes que ella estuviera encinta Cuando se cumplieron los días en que ellos debían purificarse según la ley de Moisés Llevaron al niño a Jerusalén para presentárselo al Señor lo hicieron así porque en la ley del Señor está escrito, Todo primer hijo varón será consagrado al Señor. Fueron, pues, a ofrecer un sacrificio lo que manda la ley del Señor, un par de tórtolas o dos pichones de paloma. En aquel tiempo vivía en Jerusalén un hombre que se llamaba Simeón. Era un hombre justo y piadoso que esperaba la restauración de Israel. El Espíritu Santo estaba con Simeón y le había hecho saber que no moriría sin ver antes al Mesías, a quien el Señor enviaría. Guiado por el Espíritu Santo, Simeón fue al templo, y cuando los padres del niño Jesús lo llevaron también a él para cumplir lo que la ley ordenaba, Simeón lo tomó en brazos y alabó a Dios diciendo, Ahora, Señor, tu promesa está cumplida. Puedes dejar que tu siervo muera en paz. Porque ya he visto la salvación que has comenzado a realizar a la vista de todos los pueblos, la luz que alumbrará a las naciones y que será la gloria de tu pueblo Israel. El padre y la madre de Jesús se quedaron admirados al oír lo que Simeón decía del niño. Entonces Simeón les dio su bendición y dijo a María, la madre de Jesús, Mira, este niño está destinado a hacer que muchos en Israel caigan o se levanten. Él será una señal que muchos rechazarán, a fin de que las intenciones de muchos corazones queden al descubierto. Pero todo esto va a ser para ti como una espada que atraviese tu propia alma. También estaba ahí una profetisa llamada Ana, hija de Panuel de la tribu de Aser. Era ya muy anciana, se casó siendo muy joven y había vivido con su marido siete años. Palabra del Señor. En el nombre del cielo os pido posada, pues no puede andar mi esposa amada. Eres tú, José, y tu 
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law, indeed, was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known.
Merry Christmas. I'm Gwen Lynch, Canon of the Ordinary in the Diocese of San Diego, and it is my great joy to be with you today on this joyous and festive occasion. I'm with you in a format that would have been unthinkable a year ago. It was a year ago that we first heard of COVID-19 as it came out of China, or at least seemed to. We now know that it was already on the move. It was sweeping across the globe and it was changing the world around us, even if we didn't know it at the time. Truthfully, even nine months ago, when we were sent home that day in mid-March, never in my wildest imagination did I think that we would be celebrating Christmas online. The impact has been so much greater than we expected, or at least I should say the impact has been so much greater than I expected. So here we are, celebrating the incarnation of Christ and the birth of Jesus. We are listening again to our Christian family stories. We are rejoicing. And we're doing these things even though we are not able to celebrate in the ways that we love. We're not caroling at each other's doors. We're not sharing a cup of Christmas cheer with the neighbors. Many of us will not even spend Christmas with our families. There's no candlelit mass. There's no singing of silent night in a darkened church. And yet we celebrate because Christmas, Christmas brings us news that we desperately need and perhaps need more this year than ever before. We have come together to hear the good news of great joy. We come to hear again that in the beginning, in the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. What has come into being with him was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. That is good news of great joy, especially in a time of darkness. A little bit about darkness. Have you ever been on a tour in a cave? I've been on several. I've been to Boyden Cave many times in Kings Canyon. I've been to Bridal Cave in Missouri when I was just a child. And most recently and most spectacularly, I've been to Mammoth Cave National Park in Kentucky. The Mammoth Cave System is the longest known cave system in the world, stretching more than four miles. Now, based on my admittedly small sample size of just three, all cave tours seem to have an inevitable time where the rangers turn off the lights. And when they do, you find yourself in darkness. And not just any darkness, but utter, complete darkness. Your eyes will never grow used to it. And if you were to stay in that cave, you would never again see anything or anyone. It is a dreadful feeling. And if you have been on a tour, you know that they leave the lights out just until folks really start to squirm. So just before people actually go into absolute panic, they bring on the lights. And at Mammoth Cave, the ranger lit a single match. And that tiny flame lit up the entire space and gave us peace. What does John tell us in his prologue? The light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. And that light, as small as it was, just a single match, 
gave us peace. You could feel the anxiety ease. Light is like that. It invades a space. It invades a space in a way that darkness cannot. If you are in a lit room, it doesn't matter how dark it is outside. The darkness does not overcome it. But light, on the other hand, light sneaks in under the door or between the slats on the window blinds. It twinkles in the night sky from faraway stars. Light overcomes the darkness. The world is a place that would seem to be on the brink of being overcome by darkness. Sickness, division, violence, injustice, oppression. Certainly Mary and Joseph knew much darkness, forced into a trip to Bethlehem at the most inconvenient of times. They knew much darkness, living in an occupied country under the threat of violence of Rome. They knew oppression and indignity. We know these things too. There's the darkness of quarantine and isolation where it is easy to feel so terribly alone. There's the darkness of division and violence that seem ready to wash over the whole country. There's the darkness of injustice and oppression experienced by so many. It is easy to be afraid. Ah, but do not be afraid, the angels said to the shepherds. Do not be afraid, the angels say to us. I bring you good news of great joy. Light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. The darkness does not overcome the light of Christ. The light of Christ, the word made flesh, will not be defeated. And that's why we're here today, to give thanks, to give thanks for the gift of that light, to celebrate that promise of light and life and love, even in the midst of hard times to celebrate the incarnation of Christ, God come to live among us. So rejoice, good Christian friends, rejoice. We will not be overcome by the darkness. Take heart and rejoice. The angels have brought us good news of great joy. Merry Christmas to you and yours, and Christ's blessings be upon you all evermore. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty God, you have poured upon us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light enkindled in our hearts may shine forth in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Dios todo poderoso, tú has derramado sobre nosotros la nueva luz de tu verbo encarnado. Concede que esta luz que arde en nuestro corazón resplandezca en nuestra vida mediante nuestro Señor Jesucristo, que viva y reina contigo en la unidad del Espíritu Santo, un solo Dios, ahora y por siempre. Amén. Que Cristo, que por su encarnación junto las cosas terrenas y las celestiales, les llene con su gozo y su paz. Y la bendición de Dios Todopoderoso, el Padre, el Hijo y el Espíritu Santo, sea con ustedes y permanezca siempre con ustedes. Amén. May Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with his joy and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.